again to everybody, particularly the first year students of BTEC and NTEC of the batch of 2020. Welcome to day three, the finale of Compass 2020. For the last two days, you've been given a wide variety of inputs, insights, experiences, and all meant to help you make the transition from school to college, because this is a major transition. Also, acquainting you with the new way of learning right now. Today, we have four sessions of which the first session is a very, very practical session. And here we have the session is entitled Learning Today, Simpler with Technology. Now, during this entire COVID-19 pandemic period, we've been you know, listening to words, to terms like synchronous, asynchronous, blended, hybrid, converged, I mean, there has been a brand new vocabulary, which I would call the COVID-19 vocabulary that has erupted and spread all across. Today, the entire education fraternity, the education community has been turbocharged. I don't think into the 21st century, probably into the 22nd century. And for me, an old guy like me, you know, I would say a dinosaur of the internet age. It's been a major change because what we have to do is not, you know, that face-to-face -face with our students is no more there. But yet we're getting face-to-face -face with the screen and connecting. Teachers have been working nonstop in learning new skills, in delivering. You have been learning how to access it. And in a country such as our own country, we've been able to go and penetrate, I would say, with learning material right down into the villages, right down in the towns. Why? One thing, and that is the greatest fuel, is the real intensity and the commitment and dedication of teachers across the length and breadth of the country to see that in spite of change, we continue with delivering academic excellence to everybody because that is our forte. And today in this world, we have been lucky to have technology assisting us. And together, with technology, we've been able to give things to you. In fact, right now, I'm able to talk to you. You are able to see me, listen to me here on YouTube. I mean, there's a variety of technology. Some things that we used earlier just for entertainment has now become an absolute practical necessity. Now, today with us, we have from the USA, from the state of New Jersey, from, the, uh, from NGIT, which we call New Jersey Institute of Technology, a friend of heritage, a long time friend, and a personal friend of mine, who is a professor in the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering. He is Professor Dr. Durga Madhav Mishra, known to all of us as Durga, sir. He's current, he is a specialist. His expertise lies in the field of nano-electronic cybersecurity, not in IT, but he's a teacher of many, many years. His current research are in this field. He's a fellow of IEEE. Those students of EC, when you join, you will know what it means. He received many awards. The Thomas Colonel Prizes. He's a fellow of the EC, ECS. In 27, 2017, he was an international visiting endowed chair professor at the Center of Nanoscience and Electronics at IISC Bangalore, Indian Institute of Technology. He was on one of the many panels of Viva 2020, that huge initiative by the president of our country. And he was there as a specialist in the field of semiconductor uh, nanoelectronic devices. Also, he is the coordinator of the prestigious summer research program at NGIT, which is a collaboration between Heritage Institute of Technology and NGIT since 2008. And so many students from HITK have been blessed and profited from that. One of the students you will be meeting today at the end of the final session, who is an alumnus of Heritage. Now, besides being a person who's into so many fields, Dr. Durga Mishra has edited and co-edited so many books, published many technical articles, 
in journals, international conferences. He received his MS and PhD in electrical engineering from the University of Waterloo, Ontario, Canada in 1985 and 1988 respectively. Now that's a huge thing to know. And we were in conversation and Dr. Duga Misra said, please let them know, I'm not an expert in this, but what he is doing today, he's not teaching us. Dr. Durga Misra is here to share of his experiences of how learning today is simpler with technology because that is what he's been doing all these years from New Jersey Institute of Technology, NUVA. Welcome, Dr. Durga Misra. Welcome. We look forward to listening to you, sharing of your experiences. And I'm sure those of our faculty watching in and of most of our students will learn how to handle technology to be able to gain that education so everybody wants. Welcome and well, incidentally, dear students, here it is a beautiful 10.30, 10 o'clock in the morning, 10.07. For Dr. Durga Misra, it is 11.30 in the night and yet he is giving to us. So please bear, listen in. If you have any questions, please post them in the email called questions at heritageit.edu and we'll try our very best to be able to address them. But keep your mind, questions concerning the topic, not when college is going to be addressed right now. But please keep it positive. Please keep it as a learning because we all stand to learn. Welcome, Dr. Misra. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Moses. And it is a pleasure to talk to you. So I will uh, uh, share my screen now. So... Um, and thank you for the grand introduction. I am not really uh, the expert uh, in IT, but I would like to say what I am doing right now. And uh, my relationship goes with Heritage uh, for the last 14 years. And uh, I really appreciate uh, Mr. Pradeep Ji to help me out and uh, to uh, say, ask me to give a presentation. So I will try my best. And so this is... Uh, 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 Pradeep Ji has joined on also, Durga, sir. Thank yes, you. I Thank can you. see him. I can see him. So that's what I'm saying. Please uh, can, it is a pleasure please to see We are fortunate to have you today. Okay, sir. Oh, it's my pleasure. So uh, the idea is, uh, first thing I will tell you, that I am not an expert uh, in uh, basically the uh, online program, but we are all forced to teach. So I have learned a lot of uh, new stuff and the way I am teaching my class. I will uh, definitely uh, go over that one. So before that, I will just introduce a little bit about NJIT. It's founded in 1881. Uh, we have, uh, this is all the statistics. We have around 11,000 students. But the most important thing is we have around $170 million uh, in research expenditures per year. So that is actually is, is a big jump recently. Plus, the uh, NJIT is uh, among the top uh, nation's elite schools. And because we are a research one university uh, as generated by the Carnegie uh, classification. So uh, also I mentioned here, uh, NJIT has strong collaboration with Heritage Institute of Technology. And for the last 14 years, uh, 2006 onwards, we have been going. And the 2008 onwards, the students started coming in to NJIT. It has been, except this year, because of the pandemic, we couldn't have it. But actually, we'll continue again when this is over. So what I want to talk to you, and uh, so this is, uh, I'm trying to say, uh, the outline, I will say, actually, there is a mode of instructional delivery. What type of uh, instructional delivery we are doing right now? And uh, then the type of interactions uh, between uh, the faculty and students and all, all the things we will talk. And then uh, what is the student's perspective and role if we are sitting outside? I know that you are all using technology now and I feel that you are all successful in uh, having the internet access uh, to your smartphone uh, hotspot or uh, Wi-Fi, many different ways you can access. So, but thing is sometimes we don't see the friends and the people, that's what we will look at the interaction part. And what is the student's perspective and what role they should uh, follow if you have the online teaching? And also what is faculty's best practices? For example, how faculty should deal with that? 
why I want to talk about that. The students can request faculty, sir, this is what actually supposed to be done. Please help us and please follow uh, something, some good stuff so that we can learn better. And obviously I'll give a touch of only one slide. Uh, what is the school, uh, or the heritage will do it for you. So uh, typically the, uh, uh, the modes of uh, delivery, uh, uh, there are several uh, delivery modes. I can only talk about a few of those. Uh, one is face-to-face, -face. we are all familiar with that. And there is uh, another thing is called converged learning, which our university is following uh, uh, that pattern uh, strictly to see the students uh, on campus. And uh, there is something called synchronous online and regular online or the traditional online. So uh, there is, if you go between uh, uh, in the face to face, uh, you can have, if you have some classes face to face, some classes online, that is called the hybrid. So, but I will just stick to this uh, four for now. So uh, the, uh, what is face to face delivery? Still delivery is uh, instructions is uh, structured around the uh, uh, in-person classroom meeting times which is like similar to that of you have a class going and a sort of things, instruction is delivered in the person by the professor, students are attending the class and uh, sometimes is referred as a traditional classroom. But uh, because of the pandemic or this coronavirus, uh, it's not possible uh, now for uh, this time. So we will just forget about this for now. So then comes the converse learning. In converged learning, we have uh, this is the delivery instruction is merged, uh, the physical and virtual classrooms. There is attendance expectations and the students can choose to attend in class at the, the face-to-face -face or using real-time synchronous video conferencing technology, like we are doing right now, but mostly in the Zoom or uh, WebEx. We are mostly at uh, NJIT where we're using WebEx. So in this case, we have the in-person instructor. So the professor comes into the class and then uh, we have the in-person some uh, students in the class and also remote students because we don't want to uh, get the classroom crowded. So we have a very small percentage of with social distancing, they can sit there with the mask on and uh, the pro professor can teach. And the, when the professor teaches on the, on the computer, like we are doing now Zoom presentation, that will be uh, 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 projected in the classroom, uh, the uh, screen. So that way the students in class can see the same presentation as the online students can see. So these group of students those who attend in one class, so sometimes they rotate, like they will uh, not come the, tomorrow, but another group will come. It is up to the choice of the students. So that way everybody can meet some people and they attend the class, come to the campus. So that is what actually the uh, mostly in this uh, converse learning is going on. So who, who sees uh, uh, and sees what and who hears what? So instructor actually sees the on-campus students in the classroom, like a regular classroom, but he also sees the remote students through the laptop. Uh, so there is a uh, laptop also projected in the, in the screen. So you have a presentation. I will show you some examples. And then they can see the uh, uh, students also, and they can ask questions, the students. And on-campus students see the uh, instructor and may see there are some of the remote students if you have the display on the, uh, on the classroom. Or there is another technique also. There is a second uh, a computer that is uh, presenting in the, there is a flat panel display on the back or on the side. They can, all the students attending their videos can come in there. So that depends on the uh, classroom setup. And the remote students uh, can mostly see the instructor. They can see like you are seeing me now. They can see the instructor and at the same time, uh, they can see a little bit uh, glimpses of these uh, on-campus students. So professor can write on the laptop or tablet. Uh, there is a lot of annotation can be done and can be saved in uh, uh, the PDF so that it can be shared later on if they have solved some equation or some steps or explained something that can be shared with the students. And whenever the on-campus students ask a question, 
the professor typically uh, repeats the question so that the uh, the in class students can hear that and they can uh, discuss and answer the question so that is actually sort of converged learning and uh, so it is like a merging between uh, these two different uh, setup in class and the online uh, synchronous online then comes the synchronous online which is i am uh, i have uh, i'm teaching right now so it's a delivery of uh, this uh, class is being uh, uh, taught during a day and time it is scheduled like all the courses are scheduled uh, in different times so like the morning class afternoon class evening class all the classes are scheduled exactly the time the class is scheduled so this course activity will start immediately at that time i will log on all the, all the students will uh, come in to this webex meeting or the zoom meeting and then i can share and start taking uh, teaching the class and also at the same time um, uh, there is no face and face as uh, so no face to face uh, sessions but all uh, attendance will be taken because i know who will be attending the class who is attending the class and then i will talk to them and i can see them if they have a, a webcam or video if there is no video but i can discuss or talk to them also so it is uh, the instructor is remote instructor and remote students so the professor can be i can be anywhere at home or in my office and the students can be anywhere also at their home or in a library or there is something where there is a, a, a nice environment so they can attend carefully the class so the synchronous courses resemble the traditional on campus college classes in uh, but anything is the students are virtually present at the same time all the students will be present and then uh, though they are conducted over the internet uh, synchronous courses unfold sort of in real time exactly that um, uh, the class was supposed to start at uh, 10 o'clock it's all in 10 o'clock the class will start everybody will come in in, in login and then they will start and students must commit to the scheduled class time and sign into their virtual learning platform on schedule that's what actually we are doing and during these courses students will watch uh, like video lessons or even a slide show like we are doing like powerpoint presentations and even uh, have a virtual class discussion because during my class the students uh, unmute themselves and ask questions and they can have their videos on and if they have to make a presentation they want to show me something they are actually coming back asking for a presentation authorization so i will give them the permit to present so they can present their uh, slides or their uh, pdf files that they are trying to do these things so this is uh, an example uh, see you can see me on the bottom here and in the top here and this is the class i can see uh, this is actually i uh, can see many people there this is not actually a class this is a meeting but i wanted to show you an example and then here actually i am uh, putting a powerpoint presentation and all my students have because of this some people say that there is a bandwidth issue so they switch off the video during the class but i can ask them questions we have very interactive uh, 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 sessions so students are attending the class so sometimes if you are not feeling well you don't have to travel anywhere you can just attend the class from your home and then it is not too much work you feel good so uh, so you cannot forget ever so uh, or you cannot take excuse that i am not well or you can say that oh i have this problem all these things but you can attend always attend the class so this is synchronous online now this online program which is asynchronous there are uh, no face to face uh, uh, sessions at all but students are expected to follow week by week schedule and then as outlined by the syllabus that uh, is the work is typically done in asynchronous mode that means the materials are already there and you can uh, uh, you can look at whenever you feel like when it's convenient to you and then uh, you can uh, do your homework in a weekly basis or whatever the instructions there for that course it is completely asynchronous and the professor need not come except sometimes they have uh, some online meeting or office hours through zoom or webex and or sometimes proctored exam in one particular location and that is actually most online courses rely on the synchronous uh, asynchronous tools so these are actually uh, asynchronous is not very good because you sometimes forget and you have other things you go there so the students don't um, uh, utilize that well but those who are working and they are taking a course 
So these are actually very self-motivated or self-directed students. It is good for them. Both, and then the, it is because they are taking these courses because they are working full time somewhere and they want to do this course in the evening or whatever. So this is depending on the best fit, they do that. So the online courses, let's uh, disregard for now. Let's ignore this uh, uh, for now. And then you go to this type of interaction. Let's look at what type of interaction if we have converse learning, that means in class or hybrid. Hybrid is in, the, in class, some classes, some classes are online. So if you have uh, converse learning or you have synchronous online, what type of interaction you can have? So typically we call it a regular and substantive interaction. What is regular interaction? It's weekly. Each week, the students should be encouraged to do something to engage with the instructor. At least each week, we should meet the uh, professor or do something, either submit the homework, uh, send them an email, discuss with them, ask questions, something besides the class you got to have weekly. And obviously, scheduled classes, interaction should be predictable and deliberately scheduled by the professor that this time I want to meet uh, five of you, or this time I would meet the other five. So that way there is a group meeting or sort of things. So students can request that time also. And there is a distributed thing. So sometimes, you know, if this type of meeting happens in the beginning of the semester and it's, uh, uh, and it is, uh, uh, and then at end of the semester when the exam is coming, then you meet. That is not, that clustered meeting is not very good. It should be distributed throughout the semester in a uniform way. So that is actually uh, regular. What is substantive? Substantive is uh, something is uh, the instructionally relevant, actually. This is uh, interest should be directly related to the subject matter. For example, you have a question and you, uh, you want to discuss some further learning, you want to ask some additional questions or want to do some uh, uh, additional studying for that course, you can ask the professor. So that sort of things, discussion should be there. And sometimes the instructor, uh, professor can initiate these things that, uh, okay, we will do that uh, and let's have the, uh, um, this, not just wait for the student to send email. They can always uh, start something. Like we got to have a uh, um, sort of uh, a tutorial session of the class because, uh, or something like that. And that can be done through the internet like we are doing now. And the interaction should be primarily with the professor, not with somebody else like the lab assistant or the teaching assistant or tutoring or student services. So the professor should be able to meet for a few minutes uh, every week. And that will uh, make uh, actually make the students. Uh, so you can always request the professors to meet that thing. Of course, they are busy, but they will always find time for you. So the type of interaction, I will uh, say this is uh, very important in the, in the synchronous online courses that we are saying, student and content. The course material, you have to know where the course materials are. And also the student and student, know uh, every other student in your class, either through WhatsApp group of, uh, let's say the course number, electrical engineering 101 or 102, or physics 101, you know, that course, everybody should be in the WhatsApp group to discuss things about the subject. And then the student interaction. So you have to know your professor very well because that is very important to know uh, uh, what is the way they are thinking, what is the evaluation process and uh, uh, how his teaching style, all these things also are very important. So I will send this important information to you now, uh, uh, and then the next one is what the students, as a student, when you come in to give this, uh, 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 take these courses online because of this unusual situation, what do you need to do? How you can organize yourself and sort of thing, that is the idea here. So first thing is make connections. Just because you are not in, the, in a physical classroom, consider getting to know your professor and fellow classmates. So as I mentioned already, the social media, you have this for the course, you can have a WhatsApp group and then embrace your learning style for online courses. What actually happens now, you have to have some sort of uh, mindset to make sure build your schedule, that this is my schedule, this is the course, uh, uh, physics course, this is the chemistry course, this is the electrical engineering course, or this is, 
uh, biology course or biotechnology, all these courses, whatever you are taking, you organize yourself and then be productive. So this thing is uh, most important thing is asking questions. Never be afraid of asking questions, uh, communicate with uh, those students who communicate with their professor and classmate in a regular basis are the most successful in their class, especially when you are coming to a college. So always ask questions. And communication, as I said, uh, check your email regularly because sometimes, okay, say, oh, email is not there. I am only using text, but sometimes the professor can send email. And uh, so work, you set up in such a way, whatever communication means you have, and uh, the work on it and know that to get yourself organized. Also, you have any difficulty on that setup, you can always know where to get help, whether it is from the technology department, uh, the technology support in the university or the college, or you can uh, talk to the professor, other students, senior students. So, and then organization is another important thing. Organize all class material for class in a folder. Let's say you are doing that thing, you can create Google folders, or you can have in your computer, so that all this organization should be there. As soon as the, some material comes in, as soon as you see something, organize very well. Sometimes when you need something, you know you have seen this, you may take forever to find that file somewhere. It is by mistake is placed in the wrong place. And time management, actually create a weekly study, uh, study schedule. So that is actually very important uh, for organizing because nobody is watching you. So you can attend the class and then disappear and sort of things. So you have to do these, now you are in college, so you have to look at what is the standard college schedule and okay, you can take this online class, treat this online class as a true in-person class, as if the professor is teaching, so stay engaged. And then accountability, you still have uh, the same amount of work to do, to be excellent, just without the formal classroom setting. You can do it, and uh, so this uh, technology is so good these days and makes your life much easier. And one thing actually you have to so, uh, make sure that you eliminate the distractions. When you are attending the class or when you are in, engaged in the study environment, no social media, no texts, no games uh, during the class, then, then the whole, uh, the entire purpose is lost. An active participation, you know, you can uh, always attend uh, your online class and keep your camera if it is requested by the professor. Sometimes the professor can ask if you're not, you said, okay, I cannot have, I don't have a camera, but he can ask you a question and you are ready to answer. So that sort of things will be there. So, and then technology tips, uh, uh, there is a little bit uh, interesting. Sometimes technology glitches happen all the time, uh, be it tech savvy, save your work repeatedly at Dropbox or Google document, uh, whatever the, you are using, and make sure you have uh, the correct Wi-Fi and your performance will decrease if you are feeling tired. Another thing also is take study breaks. Now one class, another class you finish, then you can say that thing, you should be always fresh. If you are uh, say, oh, no big deal, I will attend the class, and, and then you didn't sleep in the night, then the entire class time is completely lost. And the uh, self-motivation, a little bit self-motivation is required because you are attending an online class. And that will set your goals. I know you have uh, big plans for the college and I don't have any doubt that you will be successful. Now, another interesting thing is I will talk about, you will get a lot of resources by the college. This is one elearn.fyi is a site with, uh, this is compiled a lot of different colleges uh, the e-learning material, like Physics 101 class from MIT and uh, maybe from Carnegie Mellon University, they are all there inside one. So you can see, go to uh, your selection topic, let's say you are going for engineering or physics courses and see which university has this course. Those are free courses, all the free uh, uh, courses that is available and somebody put them together. And that's what this is one, uh, it was sort of a buzzword because we are, in the US also, we are facing the same situation that when it was in class, now we are online. So many people are coming up with innovative ideas. So take advantage of these things, access uh, many different courses now since you are doing this. And you will be surprised how interesting some of the physics classes are. Those who are basic physics, 
uh, you take in your class, but you can see supplement that thing with other courses. Now we'll uh, look at what is, uh, why I'm talking about uh, the faculty best practices. The reason is uh, the students, as the students you should know. So that way they, if the faculty uh, uh, is doing this, uh, all these things, I believe uh, they will, they are doing more than what I will mention. But thing is, you can also request them that, you know, we like to see this, we like to see that. So that's what I wanted to talk. And uh, then uh, the, uh, so faculty first thing is be a tech savvy. I never taught uh, online courses before when this pandemic hit, we suddenly switched to online courses. Because I have all my materials in PowerPoint and PDF, I got rid of paper, uh, uh, submission uh, 10 years ago uh, from uh, last 10 years uh, I have been asking the students to submit the PDF as a homework even though they do write those things by hand they were submitting a, a scanned copy nowadays the scanning is very easy taking a picture and uploading that but I have to learn a lot of different things for example how to take one exam uh, online exam so that in avoid it should be a very good in a sense uh, that is the only thing I uh, I learned, and it was uh, I finally learned these things. But the other thing also I learned is some nitty gritties of WebEx. Even if I have used WebEx before, uh, how to do the scheduling, how to do this thing, how to allow the students to come in through a login process, and those sort of things. So we got to learn the methods like Zoom, uh, Google Meet, uh, Microsoft Team or webex so i have presented uh, my class or uh, seminars uh, webinars all over the world using all these tools and then organizing the course materials for easy access by the students wherever we put it we are fortunate we have some tools like canvas i will show you at the end we have some tools there uh, they are actually helping us to organize the uh, the course material but whenever we put in Google uh, um, Google Docs, we have different directories and subdirectories. So this uh, week one, week two, week three, like that we organize. And so the and the toughest challenge I had the uh, online exam. So you have to learn how to take online exam and how it can be done very easily. There are many different ways it can be done. And uh, also, it is good to see uh, good to see how to learn, record the class presentation. That way, you can actually the students can play back later on because this is actually makes another advantage of uh, online uh, teaching if we can record that, so they can uh, see the class uh, presentation afterwards if they missed something, so, and then familiar with the presentation and chat room sometime for questions. You can permit them to unmute them. They can unmute themselves and ask a question, but sometimes they can mention something in the chat room, send a link in the chat room. You can also put some links in the chat room. So that actually is, is a good thing. And uh, take some breaks, uh, like small breaks, so that when you are recording, you can make, and uh, during the breaks, you can ask questions and discuss with the students. So sometimes you allow the students to share their screen, so you will see what they are doing, what is there in the screen, so you can, uh, uh, you know, or they can make a presentation. And engaging students is uh, very important. The quicker you engage the students, the more likely they will be successful. Like in the beginning of this, uh, uh, beginning of the semester. So reach out to the students who are not engaged after the first week. Find out what is wrong with them. For example, they may not have a computer, or they may not have internet access, or no smartphone. So there may be some issues uh, you can, uh, the professors can uh, reach out to them. So we did that thing. We found out some students didn't have a good uh, working laptop. The university was trying to help them to get a laptop and sort of thing. So that actually can be done. And include the detailed syllabus and uh, contact information uh, in the Google Doc, wherever the course site is and provide due dates. That is another important thing. If you can do that in the start of the semester for weekly assignments or whatever the major uh, curriculum that you will follow, what are the assignments due and what are the major assessment techniques like when is the exam, how much is the exam there, or the university does the exam, what is the internal exam, how will you do that? So or the student may ask for these things to know, to know how many times how everything is going to be done. And the course structure uh, set expectations so that the students know 
what they will need to do in order to in order to be successful so you can tell them that okay in the university exam you do these things in the um, internal exam or our ex uh, the exam that you will take how you will divide all those uh, uh, loads and the course is organized by weekly modules each week students must complete a, the reading assignment or participate in a forum for discussion or sort of things so you can do that that type of things also and label and organize as i mentioned already the course content and material if you are already doing that it is fantastic you must have done because the last semester everything suddenly stopped and uh, but it is good to have the include the due dates and consistent for weekly uh, module or the topic wise you can distribute them and they give students adequate opportunity to give feedback so you have to find a method how the students can give you feedback or ask questions about the course content so that is actually a two way process in the class sometimes say sir how can i find this or how can i do that but sometime uh, in online that may not be that easy so give them some opportunity to do that so this is actually an example of uh, the canvas that we have but we can organize these things like we can clearly uh, organize by weekly and each module includes uh, labels as a proper labeling of the course uh, folders and sort of things so this is actually uh, we follow so you can just go to my course every student can see how access to their course and they can uh, um, so they can access go to different classroom and all the homeworks are there they can submit the uh, homeworks back into this class and uh, so this is actually one class that is uh, uh, that can be handled by the professor so all the classes are actually handled that way so this is uh, even though they were uh, uh, this is actually accessible to us even though i was not teaching online classes or uh, for last 10 years i have been using this uh, so that way the students know where to submit the homework where to see the homework where to see uh, the course material like the powerpoint presentation that I had and they have to come in through their uh, campus email id so they can come in to this class so all, once you register you have automatically access automatic access to this class all the classes in fact and so that depending on the professor now all the classes are online so it has to be like that so these are some of these things and assessment assessment is important especially when you are teaching online how to take a, a exam how to make sure that students uh, um, don't uh, really uh, get the other material or do see something there are many different ways but always ask the students take picture of their work on their solving equation or something like that and upload those images or in, in pdf uh, to a site so that you can see it and there may be a comment section one folder you can share that thing they can edit they can write something in general comments uh, one page uh, the google doc uh, the editing facility to give and design of assessment uh, so that student get proper feedback also so what happens when they submit online uh, document it is difficult nowadays there are a lot of different tools so with the pdf uh, writer you can write something in the red in your hand also and then save it as a, another pdf and send it to them let the students know what them uh, where them got wrong and if you have sudden uh, the common errors by many of them so you can present the home the squeeze uh, in online and explain that these are the mistakes the uh, major majority of the students did because the question is this you answer like that so you can discuss that one as part of this uh, re review of the exam so this is actually a multimedia learning project that reviews the common mistakes by the students so this is and the interactivity interactivity is very important because uh, if you don't engage the students and students sometimes feel very lost so even though uh, i send email regularly uh, to my students that they, okay there is there is a seminar coming up you can attend that just not, even though directly not relevant they know that i am watching what is going on and they always some students always feel uh, uh the reply to the email saying that oh i am want to, i like this thank you for sending this so that actually helps and also sometimes you are busy so set clear expectations so the professor cannot uh, send this uh, email back right away like it not like a text so they will uh, but they can tell you that you know they can reply to the messages within 24 hours and the quizzes or homework whatever you have submitted that can be returned after one week 
So these things actually, uh, the students should know exactly what is your time limit to uh, reply to the email or the uh, return to their homework with feedback. And um, uh, then another thing also, the mandatory weekly interaction, like in, we call it here as office hours. So I come up with uh, a Zoom meeting and uh, then they are the Google Meet and the students come in there. And uh, so we ask questions in general discussion for that, oh, I didn't follow that. Can you repeat that section so I can make that same, bring the same PowerPoint file and present and discuss that thing. That is actually going on very well with the WebEx and, uh, and the Zoom that we, we are using here. So this uh, same thing also the students can do. You can set up, okay, there is all this group. You can make some groups and they can, if there is a very large class, then they can meet themselves among in, in, in for the course discussion. And if some student didn't understand something, they can, uh, do, uh, or the senior students can come, they can have discussions. And another thing also, uh, the most important thing is uh, ask the students, even if it takes a few minutes, students who introduce themselves during the first week of the semester, and the students should volunteer, and you should also, like the professor should introduce himself, and that, uh, okay, this is, uh, I am in the professor in this department, I am teaching this class. So this is actually a very uh, friendly environment that can be created through this online system. Of course, we have to be uh, flexible and creative. Uh, so we can always uh, do all those things, even though it is a, a heavy uh, demand on time, it is actually a good thing uh, to especially interact with the students. And then I have this uh, one slide for the role of administration. So that is uh, uh, technology and uniformity. What happens if the students are teach, taking uh, several courses, it can be many different professors uh, do many different modes, many different uh, ways they will interact with the students, many different ways they will uh, be putting these uh, course materials. So that has to be completely uniform. Our course would have the uniform delivery method, whether they will be teaching by Zoom or Google Meet, all courses should follow the same thing. The students will learn those things. If one course is Google Meet, one is Microsoft Team, and then one is Zoom, one is WebEx, then that creates a lot of confusion. Second thing also, the course material. There's a policy should be there that the course material has to be in Google Doc or in a course site, whatever the site that is allowed, and they, with the course name and the instructor name, that should be in that folder so the students can see and the professor can put the, uh, their material there. And teaching tools uh, such as Moodle, Canvas, Google Classroom, or uh, Blackboard Learn should be available throughout the campus. Moodle is actually free, uh, uh, moodle.org. Uh, you can see if we can utilize on the campus. And that is one, uh, one thing I would like to suggest. That helps uh, very well organize all the courses. The students can only see that uh, uh, when they can go through this, students and faculty can access through their email login and uh, that way the campus login facility. So that way it is protected from outsiders and the professors can update continuously, update those things. So that is one important thing. And there is a technology support system. Uh, the, there should be some difficulty by the students, uh, some difficulty by the professors. There should be a strong technology support uh, from the campus. Uh, for both faculty and students. And there is some sort of technology training tutorials. For example, if you are going to follow the Google Meet or Zoom and how to do that, how to do this uh, transfer, uh, how to do the presentation mode and what time you will start and how if you are uh, one particular time, there are several professors will teach by Zoom and how that can be done. So all these uh, uh, things, uh, uh, can be uh, a training and tutorial to the faculty. That is actually is, we are getting a lot of tutorials because some of our faculty never use technology. Uh, so uh, of course, some people uh, use uh, blackboards only writing those things, how they can uh, completely transport to online. So we got a lot of help doing the sudden transport things. So invest in the future. And that's what actually I wanted to say. And then I would like to acknowledge uh, at uh, our office of digital learning. Uh, there is one, we have an office uh, in the completely department. I am the executive director of digital learning 
Blake Haggerty, he uh, told me a lot of things uh, how to do that. And also uh, Nikki Boska helped me, okay, since you are giving a presentation to the students, and they came up with a lot of ideas. So I wanted to bring all these things together for the digital learning. And thank you. And I really appreciate the opportunity to talk to you, all the students, new students, and welcome to Heritage. And uh, if you have any questions, I would love to answer those things now. Uh, thank you, Professor. Thank you very much for sharing of your learning experiences more than ever, because it has given us a wide range. And I'm sure here we have so many of our teachers who are using plenty of it, as you are aware. But this would give us a further insight to see, OK, yes, it's done. What are some of the niggles? You know, I was really interested in one portion because, OK, I'm not delivering the course material. But okay. the question you said, you know, if we can set up, you know, weekly social interaction groups amongst the students in the first week of classes. And I'm sure that I guess that since I'll be having my soft skills classes, I would be in a position to do that. But similarly, I think each professor, each department will be working towards it in that direction. Because like you mentioned, they are away. If they were in college, they would meet whether they like it or not. But since they are away, it's a beautiful way of them, what do I say, breaking the ice with their professors, breaking the ice with many people. And I'm sure that can be really looked at and followed through maybe once we start the classes going. A lot of interesting ideas that you've shared with us. In fact, you know, these are things which you are doing. And I'm sure there, will, there are, of course, a lot of uh, a vast range of what you can do in the US of A and what we can do in India, given the kind of everything that we have, the infrastructure. But I'm sure since the first day of lockdown, one thing has really propelled these classes being delivered to the students. And that was the sheer intensity commitment and dedication of the teachers and everywhere. Forget Heritage Institute of Technology. We've been following these webinars and seminars and we found that even village school teachers have been able to do something and they did it with a difference. They involved the local community into it. They went into the panchayat office. So, you know, teachers by nature are creative and innovative by yes. nature. They don't have to be engineers for that. Because by, they will find a way to see how can I deliver this to my students? Because there is that commitment and dedication. And we've been aware of it. But this has been a good expose to us. Uh, maybe we can see if uh, uh, someone can get in. If Pradeep Ji would have some questions to speak, he could be let in. But you know, it's been innovative opening for us and for the new students joining us today. I mean, they've joined us from the 11th. It will open their eyes because some things you have said clearly that we've said, you are managing your learning together. You are the boss of it. There's no teacher to tell you. Mm -hmm. And so it's up to the person here to concern to be able to take it forward. Because if the students want to really make the best of COVID-19 situation, it's up to them. How much of time they dedicate, how they handle it. Because nothing is going to be for free. No, it, it, will be, it will be like uh, similar to uh, they have a, attending a class. They have to work yeah. hard in the beginning because beginning it's a new environment. So they have to work hard and uh, get to know their professor, get to know the classmate. But now this is because they are uh, the new generation. WhatsApp is not new to them. So, so and uh, this uh, Zoom meeting, they must be having some sort of get together over Zoom. So they can actually come up with these things for the course. So that can, fact, that can very well work for them. In fact, yesterday, while we were monitoring one of the other sessions, we've got all these students, of course, setting up their WhatsApp groups, but a lot of them were getting onto the other kind of software app called Telegram. Yeah, yeah, it's Telegram is there. Yes, Telegram, I, uh, Telegram is there. There's a lot of different things. Uh, Google has uh, different... The idea is rather than the students can start utilizing that skill which they have, you know, they are internet natives. Unlike, you know, dinosaurs like us. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. They can use it now and say, okay, can we transfer our social interaction, you know, activity and move into, into academic? And they're going to be the, they're going to be the winners at the end of the day. Yes. Nobody else. They're going to be the winners since they know it. Of course, they'll have to learn. Then they have to also realize that uh, the teacher is always there to give proper direction, not necessarily Siri or Alexa or Google. 
because whatever goes up there is posted by people who know. And the teacher, they'll have to realize to keep in touch with the teacher at all possible times, giving kind of boundaries and saying not any time because it's always available. But I would say it's important. If Pradeep Ji would like to share a few words, Pradeep Ji, you're most welcome to share with Durga Ji before we wind up for the day. So there's a question from one student, sir. Uh, please. Uh, 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 can, you, sir, can, you read, uh, can you read the question, ma'am? Yeah, I'm just putting it across. Sir, do you think that the absence of a college environment will affect the studies? If yes, then what to do about it? Excellent question. Yeah, yeah, that is actually the major thing. I mean, no, no, it will not uh, affect the studies. Only thing is, if you are at home, you have to find some place that we uh, encourage the students. Where there is a quiet place where you can attend the class, that is actually sometimes is a challenge in many of our homes. It's not that uh, a very friendly environment. We have family, and because of pandemic, everybody is there. So that is the only challenge that that is there. But uh, not going to the class and sort of things, that is not going to hamper your things. Only thing is you have access to the class. I mean, if it is you are attending, that actually we found out from the last uh, last April, actually during the, our class when we became suddenly online, we found out that is actually a big challenge. People could do research online and involve in that thing. And very rarely they can come to the uh, campus, maybe once a week or something like that, if there is required. Uh, in the beginning, we are not allowed to come to the campus. Actually, so starting from July, I think we are allowed. So that is also with social distancing we came. But it didn't uh, change anything. Uh, not, if we're not going to the campus, you can still uh, learn very well. And you have um, better uh, advantages. Some advantages are there. For example, if the recorded session of this Zoom session is there, you can play it and look at it later on. If you miss something and you couldn't ask a question to the professor, you can look at it. So there is some advantages. Students are saying they are, they are uh, as far as the learning part is concerned, they are doing better. About the social aspect of that thing is missing. That's why I'm saying. You can have the WhatsApp group, you can have some social environment in there and you can come in with the Zoom with the video as a group so that you can discuss many different topics and then say, oh, this is what new things are happening. And so that actually will help. There's another question coming, Durga. It says, yes. sir, I would like to ask you, how do we correctly choose an online course for which we want to prepare online, apart from our day-to-day -day college studies. Right now, you have so many, you have entire you know, gamut of okay. online courses. How to choose wisely that will help us? Okay, so what actually I will suggest, uh, let's say if you are uh, going to a physics class, now you are starting as a new student, you are taking a physics class you have to take. So this is an example. Then you go to these uh, basic or uh, introductory physics classes from MIT and search there and search the site I send that they have also MIT. When you go to the MIT site, they have hundreds of courses, but they have broken down those things in terms of science, engineering, and uh, beginners courses and advanced courses. So from there you can see, okay, that course out of the physics, you can see which is the uh, elementary, uh, sorry, this uh, electro, uh, uh, electromagnetic part or, uh, elect, um, or this is the optics course, depending on whatever subject is being covered, or this is just a force equal to F, uh, F equal to MA, that um, part, there are some classes also they teach in MIT. So that courses are actually available in video and in PowerPoint presentation. You can take a look at whenever exactly the class that you are following. Go shut down, uh, look at those things. It doesn't take any longer because these days uh, don't search in the Google, go to some site where they have the compiled version of everything and you have very well organized now. Especially in the uh, last few months, many of the universities have uh, well organized. You are going to biotechnology, basic biotechnology, introductory biotechnology, and then going to the higher level starting from there. So they have courses very well organized. You can search and find those things. And those are excellent supplemental courses for your uh, class so that you can see. You will be, you will be, uh, you know, you can always uh, learn new things from there. 
Okay, thank you. I mean, these are these were the two questions that came in from Abhijit Singh, and I would like to thank Abhijit for posting the questions. Would there be any other questions? We've got four minutes to wind up today before Durga sir goes and says, you know, bye bye at midnight and the next. No, but day. Uh, but there is a, there must be a, a YouTube site. There must be a site on the side to uh, write comments in the live session. So there may be some questions there. No, the the, the faculty are monitoring it. Are sending back. I don't think right now is coming, but these are very relevant ones, particularly since there's so much of online courses, you know, what to do, what to choose. Like you mentioned, we need to choose what we want to go. And of course, I think here, Durga, sir, if they choose and request the, the teacher, the faculty to guide them, I think yeah. that will be even much better because there's so much there, because I'm sure here the role of the faculty will be excellent because yeah. that way the faculty can guide the students in choosing what is course material or maybe append it down the line. Yeah, also I heard there are so many courses by IIT Delhi. So they have okay. uh, some courses, they have made it on the uh, public platform, uh, and mostly physics and uh, engineering courses, basic engineering courses. And I do not know whether they have gone to the advanced engineering courses, but they have done, and IIT Delhi has done a, a public site and also the MIT, you can search the best physics uh, um, online class, or you can search like that. You can find some of these most interesting physics lectures that almost everybody, even I have seen a few of them. There is one case the professor was holding and threw a huge ball to the side for the pendulum to test and put his uh, head in there so that it will not touch it. He said it will be one millimeter from my nose. And it was so well calculated, people thought that you know, the ball will cross his head. So those videos are there and he's teaching on, uh, so those are the things interesting. You can see the basic physics class, how it will be, uh, you know, it is done in the class. So you can search those things there, also come in the Facebook and all these places. The students are savvy enough to figure it out. The course. <laughs> of course, find your own label, that is actually the challenge, but you can search them going to a site. This uh, site actually from high school to all the way to advanced uh, uh, undergraduate level courses are there. The one I send it, elearn.fyi. No, I don't think we will look into that, Durga sir. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you for sharing with us more than ever. And thank you for still being in contact with Heritage Institute of Technology. We do hope 2021 will see the NGID program take off with Heritage. God willing, once the pandemic yeah, and, uh, We are also we are also wishing uh, for that one, and I wish uh, every student all the best, and you wish you and Pradeepji, and uh, thank you for this opportunity to talk to the students. I do not know, I am not really expert again. Why I want to repeat that? I whatever I am doing, I just trying to say that thing. I added a few things from our uh, digital learning uh, department, so that's why it may be a little bit too academic, but that's what I did. It Thank was you. interesting. It was interesting. Thank you very, very much for sharing. Now I could say for you, good night, Durga sir. Yeah. From the Thank okay, you very night. much. God bless you. Bye bye. Bye bye now.